In the last video, we talked about scalar multiplication, where we take a number, which we call a scalar, and multiply the length of a vector by that amount. However, this is not the full picture with vectors. Not only can we multiply vectors by scalars, we can also add vectors to each other. That's what we will explore in this video. This video is a part of From Zero to Geo, a series where we formulate geometric algebra, an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics, from the ground up. So how can we add vectors? Let's look at adding numbers to see if we can get some clue. We know that 2 plus 1 equals 3. We can represent that geometrically with these vectors. Notice that this vector represents the number 2, this vector represents the number 1, and the result vector represents the number 3. Let's do a few more, such as 2 plus negative 4 equals negative 2, and negative 4 plus 1 equals negative 3. If we want the addition of vectors to match the addition of numbers, we want these equations to be true. Now that we have these equations, we can forget about numbers. So all we need to do now is find a definition of addition from these equations. Let's look at this equation on the bottom. Notice that if we take the first vector and move the second vector so that it starts on the end of the first vector, then the third vector is precisely the vector starting at the start of the first vector and ending at the end of the second vector. Maybe this pattern works for the other sums. Let's look at the middle equation. Let's take the first vector, move the second vector so that it starts on the end of the first vector, and we see that once again, the third vector is the vector starting at the start of the first vector and ending at the end of the second vector. For the equation on the top, we take the first vector, move the second vector so that it starts on the end of the first vector, and we see that it is still the case that the third vector starts at the start of the first vector and ends at the end of the second vector. We can perform this process to define addition for any two parallel vectors. Given two parallel vectors u and v, we can move v onto the end of u. Then their sum is the vector going from the start of u to the end of v. Wait a minute. This definition doesn't need parallel vectors, so we can use this definition to define addition between any two vectors. For example, here are two vectors, u and v. We can add them just like we did before. We move the second vector such that its start is on the end of the first vector, and then the sum is the vector going from the start of the first vector to the end of the second vector. You might be getting confused trying to remember which vector goes where. Here's an easy way to think of it. Think of yourself as traveling along the vectors. When you see a sum, move as if you were going along the first vector, then move some more as if you were going along the second vector. Then the vector going from your starting point to your ending point is the sum. Here are a few more examples. Let's do an exercise to make sure you know how to add vectors. Here are the same vectors from the previous video. Find each of these vectors. Please pause the video and solve this. Let's first do v1 plus v1. All we have to do here is make a copy of v1 and place it on the end. Then the sum is the vector going from 0 to 6. Note that since v1 is on the x axis, this is basically the same thing as saying that 3 plus 3 is 6. Next, we will do v2 plus v3. We can just move v3 onto the end of v2. Then the sum is the vector starting at 0 and going 2 units down and 1 unit to the left. The next one, v5 plus v1, is similar to the previous ones, 
We just move v1 onto the end of v5. Then the sum is this vector here, going two units down and one unit right. The next one, v4 plus 3v3, is a bit different because you need to scale v3 first, but it is still straightforward. We need to first scale v3 by 3, then move that result to the end of v4. Then the sum is this vector here, going 4 units down. The last one, 3v3 plus v1, seems similar to the previous one. We need to first scale v3 by 3, then move v1 to the end of that result. Then the sum is, uh, what is the sum? It starts at the beginning of v3 and ends at the end of v1. The beginning and end of the sum is at the same point. So what vector is it? Well, think about the length of this sum. Because it starts and ends at the same point, its length is zero. We learned in the last video that there is only one vector with a length of zero, the zero vector. Thus, the sum is the zero vector. Now that we know how to add vectors, what about subtracting them? This is doable as well. Pause the video and try to figure this out for yourself first. To figure this out, let's look back at the subtraction of numbers. Subtracting two numbers can be defined as adding the first number to the negative of the second number. We can try to do the same thing with vectors. Of course, this now raises a new question. What is the negative of a vector? This is finally a question that we can answer in terms of what we know. With numbers, the negative of a number is negative 1 times that number. We can use the same definition here for vectors. Thus, we can define subtraction by using this equation. However, we usually just write it like this. This is all well and good. But what do these operations look like geometrically? Let's start with the negative of a vector. What is the negative of this vector? Well, we just said that the negative of a vector is negative 1 times that vector. Thus, we can find the negative of the vector by flipping it around. So what does subtraction look like geometrically? Here's two vectors. We said that subtracting two vectors is the same as adding the negative of the second vector to the first vector. Thus, we can flip the second vector and place it at the end of the first vector. Then this vector is their difference. Let's do some more exercises, this time focusing on subtraction. What is the negative of each of these vectors? Please pause the video and answer this question. In this case, the answer is actually pretty easy if you know what to do. You can just flip all of the vectors. Alright, let's now do some subtraction. Find each of these vectors. Let's first do v1 minus v2. We need to flip v2 and put it on the end of v1. Then the difference is this vector starting at 0 and going 3 units right and 2 units up. Let's next do v5 minus v3. We need to flip v3 and put it on the end of v5. Then the difference is this vector going down 2 and left 1. Now let's do v4 minus v1. We need to flip v1 and put it on the end of v4. Then the difference is this vector going down 4 units. The next one is v1 minus v3. We need to flip v3 and put it on the end of v1. Then the difference is this vector going to the right 4 units. Finally, let's do v4 minus v4. We need to flip v4 and put it on the end of v4. What's the difference here? Well, it looks like the difference starts and ends at the same place. This is like the last addition problem from before and the answer is again the zero vector. So, now that we know how to add and subtract vectors and how to multiply vectors with scalars, we can do algebra with them, right? For example, taking this expression and simplifying it.
However, in doing this simplification, we assumed that all of these properties that hold for numbers are also true for vectors. How do we know that all of these properties hold for vectors? Just how similar is the algebra of numbers to the algebra of vectors? We'll answer that in the next video.